Welcome back to part three of how to roll a henna cone. In this one, I'll show you how to seal your cone and prepare your cones for use. I like to lay down a paper towel because this is probably the messiest step of the process. So I do suggest laying down a paper towel in your workspace. As always, I like to prepare several cones in advance. This applies to rolling cones as well as filling of the cones. So now I'm ready to tape and I want to try to keep my fingers as clean as possible while I tape because it becomes very difficult to do this part if you have paint or henna on your fingers. Laying down pieces of tape across the top, I make sure to overlap between the top edge, picking up the cellophane itself. Once I have taped around the top, I press it closed and make sure that there's no henna leaking out. Then I start at each corner and fold it alternately, folding over itself several times before folding it flat and taping it securely. I recommend using several pieces of tape for this part as losing pressure will cause your cone not to work as well. If you ever have trouble getting your henna cone to flow, check your tip first, but also check your taping process. If you have not taped it securely, you might be losing pressure at the top where henna is leaking out. Again, I repeat this process several times and the more you do this, the more you'll get the hang of it and the more you'll streamline your process and figure out the best ways to do this for yourself. Lots of henna artists do something similar with the way they tape, but everyone has a favorite way to do this. So be sure to check out other artists' techniques. Once you've got all of your cones taped securely, you'll want to clear the tip out just a little bit to avoid more of this mess that's happening here. This is because I've got it taped nicely and high pressure, but it means that it's going to force some of the henna paste out of the tip. To avoid this, I put it between the paper towels, I squeeze down and I pull the cone out, which clears the tip of just a small amount of paste, allowing for the flow to come down just a little bit without squeezing out all over my table. I repeat this process with all of my cones, making sure to remove a good amount. And if I see that it's still leaking out, I'll do this process again on those cones. But usually this is enough to keep them nice and tidy. The tips of your cones will actually dry and seal themselves, so you don't have to worry about doing anything to the tips. When it's time to use them, you'll just clear the tip again the same way I just showed you. I do recommend that once you've taped and prepared all your cones that you test them. You'll want to make sure that your tip is straight, that it's cut flat across, and that the hole at the end is large enough. Play around with it and snip it to your liking. The main objective is to create an even flow with minimal pressure. The best part about a cone is that it causes less strain on your hand than squeezing a plastic bottle, but some artists still prefer to use the bottle over the cone, so that is an option if you decide that cones aren't for you. Once my flow is good, I usually run drills and practice some of my favorite elements so that I know each cone will be a good tool for me when I'm ready to create. Thank you for watching the series. I hope it was helpful. Stay tuned for my henna mixing video where I'll show you how to make natural henna paste at home. See you then.